Ramesses the 10th and Ramesses the 11th. So let's start with um, Ramesses the 10th. Uh, I can't get too enthusiastic during this period because from sort of uh, the time of um, Ramesses the 6th onwards, there's been like a 62 year decline in Egypt. Um, and really the third intermediate period started quite some time ago when the king lost authority over the south of the country. So Ramses XI had a short reign, uh, 1111 BCE to 1107 BCE. He was the ninth pharaoh of the 20th dynasty. His birth name is Amun Herkhopshef. So remember that these kings took the name of Ramesses because they were buying into Ramesses III and of course Ramesses II from the 19th dynasty. They wanted the prestige of the name. He chose for his throne name Kepa Mart Ra, the Justice of Ra. In year three, the workmen in the Valley of the Kings downed tools and they complained that there were Libyan marauders uh, in the Valley of the Kings. So what's happened with the security? Where are the soldiers guarding the raw necropolis? So these questions are quite interesting. Was the, um, the West Bank mayor um, underfunded? He couldn't afford to pay his soldiers to protect the valley. And that's why work stopped. However, they did, they were working on KV-18 and they did dig out 43 metres before they abandoned the project. During the reign of Ramesses X, there was the last inscription ever made of a pharaoh in Kush. Um, it's symbolic anyway, really, because I'm sure that Kush was actually governed by the viceroys down there. They made themselves an independent state um, and went along with the king in the north being the king for the whole country, probably out of prestige. Where the king was actually buried, we don't know. No human remains have ever been found in the tomb or any funeral objects to indicate that he was actually buried there. So that's Ramesses the 10th. Next up is Ramesses the 11th. He ruled Egypt from 1107 BCE to 1078 BCE for a period of between 19, uh, 29 to 32 years. Um, again, there's disputes over the length of his reign, according to ancient records. He was the 10th and final pharaoh of the 20th dynasty. Now, there are two powers in Egypt. There is the king ruling from the north at the old Paramesis capital, um, which you can identify on the map as being Avaris. Remember, Avaris was assimilated as Paramesis grew. In the south, there is the high priest of Amun. Now, two powers in Egypt to give laws, to make laws, the king, who is the living Horus, and the gods. So whoever controls Karnak, can make laws. Remember this, this is the important part, how they can legalize uh, separating themselves from the Pharaoh in the north. Um, why they've got their man, that's the mandate they're using to rule southern Egypt. The king moved the capital from Paramesis further um, north to a new city called Tanis. Um, and it may have been that Tanis was more of a defensible capital than Paramesis. The king named his successor uh, Smendes, and Smendes would create the 21st dynasty to follow this uh, 20th dynasty. The tomb cutters in the Valley of the Kings were sent provisions and they started work on KV4. They dug out 100 metres now what's interesting is if you have a look at the map, the burial chamber has got a shaft. 
Now, there were lots of tomb robberies going on around this period, and maybe the king felt that he didn't really want to be buried in a place which was going to be robbed. So a device was put in to kill any tomb robbers if they ever broke into the tomb. He must have known that the security in the Valley of the Kings was very iffy at that time anyway. The, when the king died, he was buried in the north anyway, probably somewhere near Memphis, we're not really sure. So Ramesses the Tenth and Ramesses the Eleventh are on the missing list. So if you come across their royal tomb full of goodies, then let me know. And with the death of Ramesses the Eleventh comes the third intermediate period. So what is uh, an intermediate period? I've mentioned two, the first and the second, now we're into the third. Well, it's where there is no sole ruler in Egypt, that Egypt is splintered into different power factions ruling and calling, calling themselves Pharaoh, King, Pharaoh. They're not the Nebtawi, they're not the ruler of the two lands, but they assimilate the status of Pharaoh to rule. So really, the term pharaoh now means ruler rather than of the whole country. When Manetho created his dynastical families, he was um, an Egyptian priest living during the Greek period of Egyptian history. And he was looking back on his uh, nation's history and he wanted to leave a record of, of his, uh, his national history. And so you could say that he was a, patri a patriot in many ways because he wanted to do that. And he used the king's list to create these, these dynastical families, uh, which would have, must have been a hell of a task at the time. He's looking at history and the chronology that he, he left behind is a great framework, but it needs to be challenged. And so... I would suggest that really the third intermediate period started in 1140 BCE when the high priest of Amun declared Waset as a religious capital. That, that was their mandate so they could rule Upper Egypt. Pharaohs were just pharaohs of the north and pharaohs of the whole country in name only. So their power was in the north and they relied on the support of, uh, of the high priest of Amun at uh, Waset Thieves stroke Luxor and maybe the viceroy of Kush because they were making inscriptions in Kush to support their, their, uh, their rule even though they didn't have direct influence in those two parts of Egypt and Kush. How much Kush is under the control of the Egyptians is unknown seems that the viceroys down there had uh, um, a military arm for sure, uh, mi uh, military forces that they used to keep down those poor Kushites who just want to be free of the Egyptian yoke. In year 29 of Ramesses XI's reign, a vi viceroy of Kush called Pianki became the high priest of Amun and he was a general as well as a viceroy and a high priest. Why was he invited or given the opportunity to take over uh, that role? I think it was because um, there were bandits in and around the area. The workmen at Della Medina had been complaining for a number of years that there were Libyan, uh, Libyan marauders in the Valley of the Kings. And I think they invited Pianke in to uh, bring order and stability to southern Egypt. The question, of course, is, um, is this an influx of Libyans coming in through Lower Egypt or from the desert areas, or are they Libyans who were born in Egypt, Egyptianized Libyans? So this is a question. Um, today, people are concerned about migration. But migration has always been a problem for nations from the beginning of time. From the first time that uh, our ancestors started moving into lands that belonged to other people. 
there has been migration? So that would be the uh, question that would be interesting to answer. Were, were these um, Egyptianized Libyans who were born in Egypt or were they uh, migrants who had come into Egypt because their landscape couldn't support them? So that's something that uh, uh, I put out there and uh, I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this information. Please press your subscribe button, thumbs up if you liked it and leave any comments and I look forward to seeing you real soon. Bye for now.